Welcome to Board Ghost, a story broadcast with games as the engine. If living is a highway, then heaven is a bus stop. Been waiting for a minute there, but has it been forever? We believe you're out there, hungry for stories for shared experiences. We can't see you, can't hear you, yet we will play for you. This night's offering is Fiasco. We're going to be using the Fiasco mobile app, and we're going to be playing with the playset Under a Full Moon. To learn how Fiasco is played, you can go check out our brief rules primer. I definitely recommend picking up the game from Bully Pulpit Games. You can get it as a hard copy or as PDF. I'm one of your humble players, John Holt. With me this week is... Stacy Douglas Moverly and Stephen Moverly. All right, so welcome, guys. We're gonna Hello. get into it. <laughs> so the first thing we'll do is roll up all our dice. Steve, why don't you go for it? Why don't you roll up our pool? roll all the dice? Yeah. We've generated our grid. We have townsfolk between me and Steve, the doctor and the priest. Who is who? TBD. We have an object, a blessed ornate cross. Between me and Stacy, we have an outsider's relationship, newly arrived travelers. We also have a location, the town center, the Wolf and Hound Tavern. Between Stacy and Steve, there's a supernatural relationship, the witch and the cursed, uh, victim of the curse of the witch, his or her curse, and the need to reveal those who are monsters. All right, so now we'll go and generate our characters and figure out who's who. My character is Fiona Adair. She's come to town uh, from a faraway area. She's coming in under the idea that she's just traveling around town. She's like she's a tourist almost. She's kind of right. traveling around the area. I'm Dr. Henrik Manuver. I am the village doctor. Also, I happen to be a witchalock. So I'm playing Brother Gregor Fune. He is a priest who is coming in this area. Maybe he's a missionary. Maybe he has come to just pay his respects and visit these small towns who may or may not have their own priest. And yeah, or maybe he's looking to take over as a, a vacancy in the church there in town. But that's what he's there for. All right. <laughs> he's there to be something. <laughs> to be something. <laughs> he's in his mid-30s, jovial fellow. We've got our characters, and let's roll into our first scene. So the carriage pulls up into the town center and pretty close to the, the Wolf and Hound Tavern. You and I have talked a little bit along the trip, but for the most part I've kept to myself, kind of kept into like reading or looking out the window. I've tried to keep to myself for the most part. When we get down off the coach, I turn to the coachman and ask him, like, where would, where would be a good place to, to rent a room for the night? And he points out the Wolf and Hound Tavern. So that's where I, I head off. Get in there, get myself an ale food and get a table in the corner and try and get a little bit of the lay of the land before seeing whether or not I want to get a room here or maybe move on from this area. Who all's there? Is there anyone? There's a lot of local towns folks there. It's towards the end of the day, so a lot of people are starting to come in at, at the end of the day. It seems to be kind of busy, but not super busy, but you can tell it's, it's a popular place. Then the door opens, and in walks somebody that I've been looking for for a very long time. <laughs> it is a certain person who had cursed me years ago so that I no longer can take my true form, which is that of a werewolf. I've been cursed to a human human form now, and I've been on the hunt through all these various little hamlets trying to find this person so I can get this curse reversed. I see them, but I don't think they see me. I tuck a little bit back into the shadows and try and see if I can observe them so I can get some more information of exactly who they are and what is their place in this town. Is that me? That's me? That's you. That's me, okay. (laughs) So as you walk in, a general like call comes up, like, ah, Dr. Manova, <laughs> come in, sit down, get out of the cold. The mist is extra chilling this evening. This is the, the innkeeper. 
of the Tavern and Hound. He's already like filling your glass with your regular. Ah, oh, thank you. It's good to be here. I was looking for somebody who was supposed to be coming in on the uh, local, the the night coach, um, the the new priest for our village. Uh, he's not been in yet, but the night coach did go by. We saw it come through. Ah, well, I guess I will just uh, be having my pint of ale. Thank you so much for preparing that for me. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. And thank you again for looking after my daughter. Uh, how is how is little Helga doing? She The spots are mostly gone. Oh, very good. Very good. Purple spots, very difficult to get rid of most of the time. Glad to know they're finally coming off. So what do you want to have happen? <laughs> the so the doctor's sitting at the bar. So after the the town the innkeeper sort of was my back back to the bar kind back of back to the bar, chatting with um, some other townspeople that are yeah a farmer comes up shakes your hand mm-hmm. a, a woodsman <laughs> t- tips his cap to you how is the Lyme disease doing <laughs> <laughs> ah well at least you're able to make noise these days that's so much better than it was before <laughs> I decide this isn't the place to to uh, confront the doctor, All who right. I find is very interesting. He's the doctor. <laughs> so I decide I'm going to try and sneak out so I can get out of the building and try and find out where his office is. Does that go positive or negative <laughs> for me? That goes positive for me, negative for me. <laughs> On my way out, <laughs> I trip over my cloak and make a bit of a rattle against some of the chairs. Couple of townspeople there. Oh, oh, are you okay? Can we, can we, you know, try and, and steady me? That of course draws the attention of everybody at the bar. Mind God. I believe that. <laughs> like, a, 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 like after the exclamation, the whole bar is quiet. We both look at each other, but I think you realize it's also not a good idea to reveal exactly who I am and and what my role with you might be. Are you uh, all right, young lady, who I have never seen before in my life? Uh, y- yes, yes, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, no, I'm, I'm fine. And I go ahead and I leave. But now you know I'm here. I, I watch young Fiona. Are you young? How old are you? Yeah, I'm young. I'm like like early 20s. Okay. Serendipitously, I watch you sort of like scan. I sort of look back, try to nonchalantly look out the window and see where you are headed. But uh, also sort of turn back to the bar and the tavern keeper is like, I saw you looking. <laughs> Are you going to finally settle down, Dr. Manova? Ah, no. It's, it's, I, no it's, I'm too, far too old to be settling down with anybody, let alone such a, a, a young lady as strange young women. You know, the guys can't know. She seemed a wild one. You could, you could tame that wildness, <laughs> Dr. Manova. Ah, 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 no. So I'm still, I'm still looking. So, so wait. When when did the uh, the young lady uh, come into the bar? Well, it's shortly after the night coach, I would think. Oh, so she was on the night coach. No, no priests, huh? <laughs> I, no one's come in yet. Oh dear. So I guess at this point, let's have. Uh... I see. As he, as you <laughs> mentioned that, like stumbling through the door, sort of crashing and falling over his, <laughs> his own case, comes Brother Gregor Fune. Uh, Barkeep, uh, you really might want to look at the floor over there. People seem to be following over it far too often. <laughs> are, yeah. you, are you dressed as a monk? No, I, I've got a sim- like a simple like traveler's cloak on and and just sort of simple simple okay. clothes. But I've got a, a like a nice cross on a chain and yes, not not too like heavily vest vestment vestmenty. Yeah, uh, and I've got a couple cases and bags and. Who's who's the new fellow? Is he was? Have you seen him before? Nein, this is the first time I've seen this man. Ah, all right. I, I will walk over to the fellow that just stumbled through the door. Uh, so he's kind of picking himself up, shoving some things back in one of his cases, and sort of kind of brushes a mop of hair out of his face. I was like, my good man, how are you doing? I'll brush his shoulder, sort of like try to help steady him a little bit. Oh, uh, hello. Yes, I'm doing quite good. How are you doing? <laughs> Fine, fine. Um, you would you happen to have just come on the night coach by any chance? Why, yes, I did. It's quite a night for it, you know. <laughs> it's very, it's a bit, it's a bit very chilly, very dark. I, I mean, I've not seen. I don't know if it's the mist, but whew, it does not get so dark near the monastery. 
Oh, the monastery. Uh, very good. Uh, you wouldn't happen to be uh, Brother Foon, would you? I am indeed, and whom, whom do I have the good... Uh, I'm doc- Dr. Manover, Dr. Ah. Heinrich Manover. I've been sent by the town council to welcome you to our little hamlet. Well, it's good to meet you, Doctor. It's nice to meet you as well. Well, all right. Uh, I was I was going to get myself situated and acquainted. Uh, I don't know that the that you have a church sorted or anything. We do have a church, yes. Otherwise, we wouldn't really be needing a priest now, would we? All I mean, right. Well, then I, I will. We could. I could take you over to the rectory that's attached to the church, so you could help help get you settled in to the churchy area. That there. would be fantastic. <laughs> Let's make our way over, shall we? Let's. Uh, unless you're. Are you still? Uh, I wouldn't want to put you out if you want to stay. No, no, no. That, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help usher you into and welcome you to our little town. All right. What are you trying to get out of the scene for your guy? Uh, I'm just trying to try to eye up the priest there and see is is he going to be I'm happy to see that he's a bit bumbling somebody that might be easily kind of coerced and brought around to to my particular way of thinking the the doctor uh, he, he says well doctor I'm uh, let me just gather my bags here and he's let, just, let me help you with that uh, so you uh, how's things how are things gonna go I think they're gonna go positively for ah so so you lift one of the bags, and it is very heavy. Oh, my God, what is in this one? It's oh, no, 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 so no. heavy. I'll let me, I'd better, uh, I'll it's sort like, of like... It's like a two-arm thing for you. And he's like, oh, no, no, sir, uh, no, I'll get this one, no problem. <laughs> and he takes it one-handed, and, he's, and he has a second bag he's carrying with that same hand. <laughs> and is like, oh, no, I've, I've got it, sir. Just show me the way. I, no problem. Holy cow. <laughs> Wow, you're a, you're a strong one, aren't you? Yes. Okay, let's let's go this way. Oh no, no, you just it's just how it just you just have to know how to carry these things. You know, very very cumbersome if you don't quite. You know, I've I've lugged these things across Kingdom Come. <laughs> oh, ha, yes. Ha. Anyway, let's go. All right, and then uh, so we head off to across town through the mists. Do you ever like grab a lantern from? The, oh yeah. That's- and we just kind of uh, I've, I've, I'm assuming I've come in with a lantern as it is night already. Yeah. So, I've, so you kind of bring your lantern through yeah. and we get to the rectory. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, well, I, I guess I can part ways here for. Uh, well, let me let me help you in and, and light some light some of the fires for you. Well, that's uh, that would and, be swell. Thank you. Do come <laughs> in and uh, let me see if I can. We'll see what we have. Maybe I can make a cuppa for you. I doubt you have any things like. I've got some. <laughs> I've got some things in my bag. Oh, mm-hmm. excellent! Great, very you good. Never travel without proper tea. <laughs> ah, so, uh, all right. And he he kind of goes off into the kitchen and is making tea. And he's left his bags there. He's he did open. He took one small bag with him, but his bags are there. I, I'm gonna like find out like that the super heavy bag. I want to mosey on over to that thing, and uh, see if I can sort of like. I'll keep an eye out. Like, how far away do I? I have. I'll have. I'm assuming I've been in this house before. Yeah, yeah. So I'll kind of have an idea. Like, all right, I'm gonna kind of send me a Jimmy the case opener. Um, it's full of weapons, like da- dig, jagged, nasty looking <laughs> daggers that are very shiny. Very shiny, huh? And you hear him coming back. Oh, yeah. I close it, and I'll move far away from the very shiny weapons. <laughs> Try to dust a little bit, so if I'm see if. Ah, and here's your tea, sir. Oh, thank you very much. It is most hospitable. This is so nice. Like I was, I was a little worried coming into a, you know. Well, we like to make people welcome in our little hamlet of ham, <laughs> Hamelskaf. Hamelskaf. <laughs> I like to call it ham for sure. You know. <laughs> yeah, so it's very nice, very pleasant to be here. This will be a bit of a flashback to on the coach, mm-hmm. like riding in through the night. And it's it's actually like the night before we were arriving town, so we you know we traveled a few nights or, or the day of, like the day before the evening that we arrived, or whatever. And you had fallen asleep in your nap. I, I went into some cases and and was kind of fiddling around with some things, and um, and the the noise woke you up, and I'm and I said, oh my lady, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. How are you? How are you doing on the ride? Are you? Oh, I'm I'm doing fine. It's 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 kind of a long ride. But, you know, I enjoy traveling, so it's something that's not bothering me. Hmm. And you you say you've been to Hamelsgaf before? Have you been to any, have you been to this country before? I've been around this area before. Hamelsgaf is the, it's the first time I'm actually going to that particular hamlet, but I've heard a lot about some of these small, quaint uh, villages, so I thought I would check it out. Are they pretty friendly to men of the cloth, as it seem like? You know, you know, some of these rough types, they... 
they like to commune a little more with nature than God sometimes and get a little coarse. Oh, I think so. You'll, you might find a little bit of that, but you're going in as their new priest. I'm sure you'll be fine. I mean, if they're inviting you in as their new priest, then they obviously are a godly town. I, I should hope so. You know, I, I do want to uh, do what I can for these communities. How long have, how long have you... Uh, had you had other parishes that you had been at before, or is this your first time out of... Well, you know, yeah, this is this is actually the first, uh, this is my first mission, if you would, that the uh, monastery has set me on, but I'm very excited. In fact, let me, uh, could I read you uh, one of my, my sermons that I've that I put together? Figuring that the time is going to take a while, and I'd actually kind of like to get a sense of the gentleman, I say, of course, I, I would love, to, I'd be honored to hear one of your sermons. Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> so, uh, so this is from uh, Daniel. This is... Uh, in uh, so all right so Nebuchadnezzar uh, there's a statue and there's a thing but let me let me just read this to you and he starts droning on and on and on and this is where I'll ask for a choice to be made whether it's going to go well or not for Brother Gregor yeah let's say this goes well this goes well for Brother Gregor okay so he drones on and on and on and you just it, with the like movement of the carriage and the warmth of the afternoon and the monotone of the voice you just like fall <laughs> back into sleep very deep sleep and um after after like maybe 5 10 minutes near the end of his page he looks up and stops and says and the five the five feet represent the oh, all right then folds away his paper and takes out the things he was looking for and like gingerly reaches over and takes like a small, like a pin and dips it in this like vial of clear water and then pricks you with it. And it sizzles. And there's no like pinhole or anything. And he nods and puts all away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So it's the next morning after Brother Gregor has been brought into the to the church and the rectory. And uh, Fiona had followed them. Uh, she had kind of followed them to try and see where they had gone. And she figures that since Heinrich knows that she's there, she's better off maybe allying with the new traveler until she gets the lay of the land. So she decides she's going to try and see if she could offer her services as to be able to do some cooking and cleaning around the place that she needs to stay in the area for a little bit and needs to have room and board kind of situation. So she goes up and uh, knocks on the rectory door. You hear some crashing and fumbling inside the door finally swings open and there in a nightgown is the brother gregor foon and he's like oh oh milady so i'm so sorry i i'm still kind of getting my legs about me um give me just a moment and slams oh. the door in your face <laughs> fiona jumps back a little bit kind of startled and you hear some more situation. crashing and like s- gentle cursing like foot foot sugar <laughs> By golly. <laughs> and then uh, he, the door kind of swings open, and there he is, like, uh, wearing an inside-out shirt and, and with his, like, kind of cloak cinch, cinched about him and kind of nodding his collar. And I, I I'm, I'm, do apologize. What, what can I do for you this morning? Oh, I'm so sorry to bother you, Gregor, um, uh, Brother Gregor, but I, I, I was wondering. I, I need to stay in town for a little bit longer than I had planned, and unfortunately I hadn't um, – I had been mugged. Uh, in the evening by some people on the outside of town. And so I was wondering, w- would you be willing to uh, have somebody maybe help you around the rectory for a couple of days until I can get myself settled and be able to leave again? Mm. I I would say yes, but there are two large obstacles right now. So one, um, they haven't quite given me sort of uh, the, the, the general... I've not been paid my stipend from the town yet, so I, I can't really like provide you with with much in terms of payment or rations and two the rectory is not particularly large and i don't know if people would take kindly to their new uh, uh man of the church man of the cloth having like a, y- a young woman staying in with him i don't i don't know if that scandal will hold i'm oh, so sorry uh, no understandable i wouldn't i wouldn't ask to uh be paid um i think i might be able to have somebody I might be able to arrange for a way out of town within the next couple of days. I, I just need some place to sleep. Uh, even if I could just sleep in, in the church, maybe, in the back of one of the pews or something? Uh, well, I couldn't, I couldn't possibly allow that to be a, the case. You know what? You take my, you take my space, and I will, I will either sleep in the church or I will talk to uh, uh, the, the tavern keeper and see if he'll put me up. You know, sometimes us men of the cloth can, uh, you know... 
bend bend ways. We do have God's ear, and sometimes we can put in a good word for a little earthly turn, you know. <laughs> oh, so, uh, I, are you sure? I, I would feel so horrible about putting you out of your own bed. Not at all, not at all. I mean, I've I barely slept in it yet. It's it's one night in, so. Well, thank you so much. May I make you breakfast? Oh no, that will not be necessary at all. Well, at least maybe I could help you with some unpacking or some dusting of the church to prepare for your first service. Uh, well, yeah, let's see. How, how is this going to go, Steve? Let's see this goes well, too. Just because I right. think that would be more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he says, yeah, sure, yes. That that would actually be very nice. I unpa- Between unpacking and just kind of getting my getting my legs about me, I just haven't, I'm quite, I'm starving right now. It's, I, I could do with a good meal. Um, do you have, I really don't have any stock in my kitchen though. Uh, so. Well, I know there's a, far ne- a farm next door and I'm sure they've got to be godly people. I'm sure they'd be willing to, to you know, if I, I just said I was going to go over just to, if I might have some eggs, a couple things just to get you set up, I'm sure they would be willing. How about this? You, you stoke the, the fire and get get everything prepped, and I'll go I'll go over and ask them for these things. That that way, it doesn't seem like, you know, I'm I'm asking someone in my to to beg favors in my wake. Yeah, certainly. All right, and so I go over, and you I let you in, and I go over and gather up, you know, some eggs and a little bit of bread. milk, some bread, and, and I go into and the some kitchen, like which is lard or whatever butter. Yeah, a sausage. Yeah. And I go in and start kind of cleaning the kitchen, which is, you know, no one's been in the building for a while. It's very dusty. So, but I'm also kind of hoping I can gauge to see whether or not you might be an ally against this person who's cursed me, that maybe I can switch it around so that I could make them Mm. to be the persecuted one. The kitchen, except for like a tea kettle and a couple like cups that are in like the wash basin, there's not much else that you can see going on like in the areas that you're in. Something like when you get close to the wash basin and the tea kettle, it like you're it's revolting like there's something in the pit of your stomach that kind of twists so i immediately kind of go wait a minute there's something more to this brother than than i think <laughs> uh and so he he gets back as and is and kind of starts bustling himself about and goes, oh, you know i it, what they say of, of priests and bachelors always a mess their home so he sort of washes down pours out the kettle washes it down and like you you feel a lot better. He sort of sort of dumps out the whatever the, had been the brewing, dregs what of, sort tea. of, of yeah. tea, yeah, whatever sort of tea he had been using. Okay, and yeah, and you have a nice breakfast. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let, let, why don't you guys set the scene? All right, sort of the in, during the day right now, you are you've watched this sort of like you kind of spied this exchange a little bit going on, like where the where you saw Fiona go into under the skies of, of sort of visiting and. You you decide you need to get some more information. You need some other sources to to provide you information. So you go back home and you have a nice little house, like a little kind of like nicely set up. You a mm-hmm. lot of barter pay for the work you do. Uh, nice herb garden in the back, very well stocked for a, <laughs> a doctor. And and you you pick a few select herbs and you you open up the root cellar mm-hmm. and climb down under your house and there's a like a wooden door that's sort of like covered in in some tarps like behind some some storage bags mm-hmm. and you pull that you pull those tarps away and pull the door open and go into this chamber a, a circular chamber that has candles everywhere and dried like <laughs> herbs hanging from the ceiling bone like small animal bones sort of scattered about and patterns written in the dirt on the walls and on the floor and you you take some salt and you start drawing a pattern in a circle in the middle of the room. Okay. You take some of these herbs and crush them and burn them, and it makes like a smell, and there's like a cloud in the air, and you- Peer into the cloud? You peer into the cloud. Looking looking to see if I can divine the, uh, divine's probably not the right word here. Yeah, <laughs> discern some truths. Discern would be better, yeah, about what's the happening inside the uh, priest's abode. Yeah. So what? It, what do you? How will this go for your guy? Uh, it it will go well. He will find out what's what's the uh, happening inside. All right. Um. So you so you look inside and you see you see the two of them like having a meal together, and you see that whenever Gregor gets up and turns his back and like goes to do something like put some dishes away or get some like 
more cream from the dish or something, like to pour his more tea, that Fiona looks at him like askance, like what's going on? And then every time she gets up to do something, like to put a dish in the wash basin or, uh, you know, cut another slice of hard sausage uh, or toast some bread over the over the stove, he, he like reaches into his cloak and and like a dark cast comes over his face, and that's and that's the information you get. Is okay. Anything so, else? So I, I will like ah very interesting. So maybe let's see what happens if I do a little bit of this, <laughs> and I'll I'll go back upstairs to my uh, house, bustle about the kitchen. I've got a pretty well stocked larder, and realize you know gather a basket and full of jug of milk, and you know realizing that the. Things that someone might need to make some meals, a, a, a chicken, bring over a chicken. I'm sure I've got plenty of chicken. I've been bartering for stuff. <laughs> live chicken. Of course. <laughs> Two live chickens. One is like a good eat, roasting chicken. The other one is a good egg egg, egg, egg producer. Sort of call around to one of the little uh, the neighbor boys that helps me out with some errands to help me bundle all this stuff and go visit the priest to uh, deliver unto him some supplies, realizing he doesn't really have any. It's later in the evening. Brother Fune has uh, kind of put away all the makings from food, f- taken all the stuff that uh, Manover brought over, <laughs> hmm. and has bid Fiona a good eve and headed and heads out towards the tavern. And he he definitely he he empties out a good amount of the of his belongings from the bedroom and and is bringing still brings like a case back to to the tavern to uh, his like night clothes and stuff. So he's got most of his belongings with him. And uh, yeah, so he goes he goes over to the tavern, walks in there, kind of like again sort of stumbling under the weight of his of his stuff, and goes up to the barkeep and says, "Ah, good sir, so I." I should have asked you much earlier about this, but uh, it seems that I've been v- very charitable and given away my uh, my my bed at the rectory. So I was I was wondering and hoping if there, you know, is there a room at your inn? Has it? <laughs> <laughs> well, for a man of the cloth, we've always got room. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, you know, and uh, does there happen to be room in a tankard for uh, at your inn? <laughs> <laughs> your bartender just goes over, and pours a pours a pint. All right, so I uh, so I kind of sit there and relax and drink my beer, and um, on the house. Thank you, thank you. And that's when uh, Doctor Manover kind of comes in on his rounds. He, he generally sort of does a has his pint in the evening before he kind of calls it a day, and he, he comes around to the tavern. Serendipitously, sort of like steps into the bar. Airs the spot on the floor where everyone's been tripping, kind of stamps it down a good couple times, feels satisfied, and kind of wanders back over to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> ah, d- uh, Dr. Manover, I can't uh, thank you enough for for the larder that you provided. My pleasure, Brother Foon. It's good to see you. Good. Sorry, so sorry, actually, I feel a bit of a miss that we did not um, make sure you had the supplies before you actually, you know, to spend the night. Um, you know, we don't like to leave the live chickens in the houses by themselves, but I should have been able to bring them over for you. And we are sorry, sorry that it didn't happen until the later. Oh, no, it's it's quite all right. You know, uh, everything everything seems to have been worked out. You know, it's I, God I, will provide. I noticed I noticed you had a little help this morning in the in the in the home making sort of um, processes. Yes, uh, it was it was quite nice having Miss Adair over. I, I'm sorry that she didn't. She was not able to stay and speak uh, earlier when you came by, but um, yes, it was very, it was very nice of of her to come over and then of you. It was a doubly blessed day. Yes, it's. It, 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 don't really know this is young Miss Adair. Is if that is, is that's her, that's her name apparently because I have never met her before in my life. So um, I she she's uh, new to town with you. Did you do you, uh, what do you know about this mysterious young beautiful woman who's suddenly staying in your house for some reason that is seems a little odd to me because it, it's a little odd. It is. It is. It is a bit peculiar. But Miss Adair is a, is a definitely a peculiar woman. And and honestly, I I hear that you are quite the bachelor in town. Uh, you could 
You could make her acquaintance. <laughs> yes, people keep trying to set me up with the young lady, but I don't think that would be you? a good idea at all. Because I no. think, oh, good sir, I do believe that uh, <laughs> they've been seeing you've taken interest. No, in no, 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 not no. Yeah, go on, brother. Is so, it, uh, ha, 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 someone yes. was just saying how beautiful they saw her and asking quite a few questions about her. What? Oh, oh, it's me. You're saying it's me. <laughs> yes. Ah, that's funny. Yes. No. No, that wouldn't work, because she's a young... No. Anyway, so what do you know about her? Oh, that's me asking questions about her again, isn't it? <laughs> okay, well, what do you tell me? Oh, uh, again, I, I just know that she's she has some connection to this area. Uh, I don't know that she's been to this town before, from what she was saying, but... Uh, yeah, I I don't know much about her. We just tra- we traveled for a good time together. She came on uh, when I when I got into the country, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. yeah, so it's it's been nice. She's so, very kind. And do you know what brings her to this particular little uh, into a little hamlet of Hamlet's Golf? I do not. She seems she seems to play things quite close to the vest, uh, and I I just let her be. You know, it's. Let her keep her own counsel. She'll come. She'll come to to let us know if she needs anything. But she doesn't seem to be any sort of trouble. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Uh, you know, it's, it's a man of your position should, um, you know, maybe not keep such close company with the young ladies of the uh, town. Ah, yes. This is this is something that I was worried about. It's true. Um. I'm a, you know, I'm a worldly gentleman. I've been around. I understand that there are, you know, one thing may look like a thing, but it's not really a thing because it is another thing altogether. But uh, just, you know, some of the people in town, it's a very small town, you know, some of the people, they might not be so understanding of oh, this. I, I'm quite aware, you know, rumors can fly and uh, I, I definitely would want to put to rest any sort of untoward, you know, I'm I'm very much, I am, I am married to the Lord I'm married to my work uh, as a voice of God so no it's uh, I'm afraid that is not a sacrament that I will partake in and uh, you know I'm uh, not quite so <laughs> but uh, you know that's interesting rumors they do travel faster have you heard have you heard any sort of like strange goings on in the town anything that you know uh, anyone in, in trouble any sort of like problematic things anything that you know a uh, uh, a holy man might be able to absolve someone of or just sort of help out with? Well, there have been some outbreaks of the some some the the purple spots. The the, the purple, purple pox. Purple pox. Yes. Um uh luckily we've I've been I've been uh working on a remedy and it has it's proven to be fairly uh fairly uh successful mm. um in curing that's fantastic news. That is a is a very deadly uh, plague that had been going around. It the can parks. be very deadly. Yes, it's not it's not something you it's want. Surprising that uh, so you've been able to, I, I you know I've normally like, towns you'd see would would have burn piles outside of them when the purple when a, and the big purple sign that says oh no box. yes we well I'm I'm a very learned man and I if you know the the quaint timely little doctor of the little tiny hamlets there they they very narrow narrow in their view of medicine very narrow and I am not so I believe in a more broad approach sometimes looking to our historic remedies I believe in a somewhat I believe called holistic medicine hmm I mean I I'm <laughs> I, I know more of the holy medicine, you know. That, that <laughs> That's what a with, good one. What but with uh, the, you know, ills of the body are often uh, sort of a, a symptom of ills of the soul. And that's a that's a very narrow view of the things with the medicine. Oh, no, no, no. Quite, it's it's been easily proven that that if you are not right with your God, you are more you're more inclined to illness, especially if your township is uh is beholden to something dark then you uh you may find yourself in a bad position it sounds like you have been ministering to the souls of men and and helping them in some way well yes we have been ministering to the people of our town as befit our town hmm i would you know i would really like to uh to kind of see your work sir if you would ever permit me well, I'm a very busy man with the, uh, the squashing of the purple pox at the moment, but maybe, yes, definitely in time. In time, we will 
Definitely put that on the schedule for me to be speaking with you about well, how's this going to go. Uh, well, we have a lot of negative dice to fit, to give out, so I'm going to say negatively. All right. Yeah. So I I press harder. I'm like, sir. I mean, I I would imagine I was speaking with the tavern's keeper. He was saying his daughter was very ill until recently. Uh, was that also the purple pox? No, that was a very different disease. Um, but uh, you know. It's a little thing that sort of just breaks out in the in the region um, around the the. But hammer. You've, you've treated her successfully. Oh yes. Ah. Oh, and I guess so. She, she's quite cured then. So there's no point in seeing how that's been going. No. Hmm. Well, you know, I would yes, I would like someday to see what you've done. But yes, give me a. But someday we will. But unfortunately, it's not going to be now. Mm. Not now. Well, I must retire for the day. This is uh you know, this is quite a bit of drink. It goes to my <laughs> head very quickly, just a little bit. Do you, do you need help getting back to the rectory? Oh no, I'm going to actually stay this evening. I'm I'm allowing Miss uh, Adair to to take my my room for the evening. Oh really? You, you charity is is good for the soul. This is true. Charity is is next to. And, and I would not one of one of your uh, one of our rumors. It's going good. Around. It's good that you are not spending the, on the night under the same roof as. What did you say her name was? Uh, Miss Adair. Ah, yes, Miss Adair. Now we have reached the halfway point, so we're going to go to our tilt. Yeah, so everyone roll your dice up. All right, so we've generated our tilt. We've got mayhem, an out-of-control rampage, and paranoia, a stranger arrives to settle a score. All right, so Fiona heads into town. She's been there for a couple days. Brother Foon has stayed at the tavern during this time. Mm -hmm. And she realizes that she needs to probably leave soon. So she decides what she wants to do is try and see if she can get some sort of evidence against Herr Doctor that she could bring to the brother. Because she suspects that the brother is a little bit more than he seems. And he might be able to actually take on the doctor either as smearing his name in town or maybe at a higher level. She's not exactly sure. So she heads over to the doctor's office. And she waits until she sees him go out on an appointment. And then she heads around to the back. And she tries to see if she can sneak into the, to the building. She suspects anything he's got has got to be down in the basement. It wouldn't be up where people could see things. So would, would the basement of this, would it be like, is there an outside entrance to the basement? Or is there basically like she'd have to go through the building? No, there's an outside entrance. Okay, so she, she sneaks around to the back. And she tries to see if she can get in to the back area. Mm-hmm. Uh, luckily for her, the latch isn't very hard to get through. She definitely, even though she's no longer in her true form, she does have strong, more strength than she would as a normal human being. So she's able to pop it off and then head down into the basement. She sees all the different things, the hanging herbs, and she tries to look around to see if she could find something that she could bring back as uh, evidence to Brother Gregor Foon. The, the, well, it- if you just go into the direct part of the basement, yeah, it just looks like a regular basement. Just looks like a regular basement. Okay, so yeah, it's she... like a musty, like a very well stocked like roots and herb cellar. There's some like cans, like which looks like he was able to spring for some uh, glass cool. and some nice glazed pots that yeah. uh, that are labeled uh, various jars of jams and preserves. All right, so she starts uh, exploring the basement, trying to see if she can figure out there's got to be a secret door here or something that's hidden hidden away or maybe some supplies down here in the basement that she might be able to bring back uh, to Brother Foon. All right. Uh, how's this going to go, Steve? I'm going to say it's not going to go well. Uh-huh. <laughs> <coughs> so how does it not go well? I think you come back. I think the hair doctor comes back. So she's in there, and all of a sudden she hears a, a noise behind her and rolls around. I should have expected you sooner or later, Fraulein. Miss Adair, are you going? You're going by the Miss Adair, I see. I've heard. Yes, I am. You are going to be exposed for what you truly are. For even though you, might I'm going to be exposed. I, sir, am in human form now. There is no one who would know that I am no. I am not a human. But you obviously have things and secrets about you that make you far more dangerous than I am. You might have wanted to spend a little more time getting to know the town a bit before you'd go around making the accusations against the things. You betrayed your kind, madam. Why would I allow you to stay in your proper form? I had to do it. 
I had to do it to save my kind. You were leading them down a very, very dark path. If it wasn't for what I tried to do, they would all be dead by now. It's interesting that you still think this way. Well, what are you going to do with me? Brother Foon expects me back to be able to help him set up the church for his first service. There's nothing that you can do about it now. I suggest you let me leave. I have been a very patient man. I can be, afford to wait a little longer. So I stomp I'll out. St- I'll, like, I'll, I'll step aside and let you. I pass by you, glaring at you the entire time, stomp up the stairs, and head out. <laughs> stomp, 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 stomp. All right. And I head back towards the, the rectory, trying to see if I can think of a way to talk to Brother Gregor Foon about this. All right. I'll, I'll sort of scan around the uh, root cellar, hoping that I was uh, got in, here in time and serendipitously go over to the little line of salt that was scattered across the doorway and sort of fill it back in and inside a little incantation. Uh, make sure that she did not discover the secret area uh, find that, that that's still hidden and sort of go out into step out of the basement and go back towards the town center so I get I get back to the top of the, the stairs I go around to the front and then I see a large hulking figure incredibly large and green <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Standing at the edge of my the path to my house, I turn to this figure. Val, you just missed your daughter by a matter of moments, sir. <laughs> and is he like in human form? Yeah. Mm. You still stink, Manover. <laughs> There's nothing I can do for her. The curse remains. She shall never once again resume her true form. You should have obeyed the council's rulings. The council were fools. They're old. I took their throats, and I'll find a way to take yours. My throat's a bit busy holding up my head at the moment. I'd like to see you try it. <clears throat> Your humor won't save you this time, Manover. Are you sure it's been working pretty well so far? <laughs> <laughs> Rage tries to cross the path, like across the stones onto into your yard. And Not sort of so fast. <laughs> yeah. And sort of like snarls and sizzles mm-hmm. and spits back at you and storms off into the... Well, no. How's this going to go? Remember? I don't know. How's it going to go? <laughs> How's it going to go? It's your scene, Steve, right? All right. Yes, it, it, goes, it goes negatively for hair doctor. Oh. The doctor confidently looks around, expecting to see one of the helpful townspeople. But there isn't actually anybody on the street at this particular moment in time. And uh, the doctor quickly realizes that he's a bit trapped. He's as trapped as the other guy is, in that there is only a finite amount of space that he can move within. Uh, Yeah, so this guy sort of, like, smiles like a toothy grin and slinks like back into the shadows and off the path into the trees. And you can just kind of hear rustling like as occasionally, like it's clear that someone is making this noise deliberately, like around the perimeter of your home. There's just like, like you're Testing being the, stalked. Yeah. As soon as he leaves, he will be. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hmm. I, I go back inside to try and devise another I go. I go into the basement, into the move aside the secret door and start trying to come up with some sort of means of escape. Yes, in the church, Brother Foon is like prepping the church. He's hanging tapestries and dusting, kind of like polishing the few sort of like simple. This is a very simple place. Simple wooden bowls and kind of like laying out his vestments. And he he pulls a knife and starts like carving like runes around the door of the church and is sweaty work and uh, a, a bead of sweat like you see kind of like he's wearing a, like a simple like linen shirt it like goes down his back and as it goes down his back we sort of flash and we're seeing his naked back and it's there's just blood all over his back and you're it's we kind of pull back and we're in this dark 
like vaulted stone cavern lit with flickering lights uh, from these guttered tor- like sputtering torches. There's a man with a with like a, a silver pick and and a bowl of like deep red ink and uh, again and they just kind of like go back and they hammer some more into his back and he like grits his teeth and sweats pouring down his face so, so you just you see the scene and you there's just all this blood like all over his back and we kind of flash back to the present and he's washing his face in a bowl of water and um he kind of on the on the now he's by the altar and he's got this silver bowl like clean and pure with like water in it that he's just washed his face in and a, a silver dagger to one side and uh, a book, a Bible bound in silver in this like kind of ruddy thick leather. That's when Fiona Adair comes in and he's he's in his work shirt but it's he's definitely been like sweating and kind of getting things ready and you step in to a to a, a pristine sparkling ready to go little country church. Oh, Brother Foon, it looks gorgeous. You've done so much work here. Uh, he turns to you, and he kind of like his hair's a little wet and like rippling, and there's like <laughs> sunlight behind him. And you can see through his shirt just like rippling sinews. And he's just like, Fiona, how are you doing? It's so nice. He kind of like shrinks on himself a little bit. So nice to have you again. Um, I-, I brought wildflowers he kind of, for the church. He kind of like stumbles back and tips the like simple wooden altar over, and things kind of go spilling out and away. He's like, oh, oh, so clumsy. And he kind of turns and is putting, kind of like bundling up everything. He's like, I'll clean this up later. I'm making such a mess of things. I brought wildflowers for the altar. Oh, well, that's so kind of you. I, I'll i have to see. I mean, I, I like to have sort of like sermon-oriented props along with my uh, work. Just, you know, I, so like I like the flowers to sort of be part of what I'm going on, but maybe they'll work perfectly. You know what? In fact, I might be able to revise my sermon. These are lovely flowers. Thank you so much for bringing them by. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> by the way, Brother Foon, the doctor, the doctor makes me a little bit nervous. Have you, have you noticed? I remember us having these discussions about how sometimes these small hamlets will be more of a, a uh, paganistic following and maybe not true followers of the church and mm. i i worry from some of the discussions i've had with townsfolk that the doctor seems to be really more of that leaning some of the things he does is definitely not of a true christian faith as far as his practices it seems huh those are very heavy accusations we we are new to town here yet and i I wouldn't want to cast aspersions on my congregation quite so yet. He's been very warm and very kind. He's very clearly, he may put more stock in his science and medicines than uh, he does in faith in God who does true healing. But, you know, I uh, I don't know if, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on things, but I've, I've a very astute keen sense for uh, dark gatherings and dark doings. And I would tell you that I've found nothing untoward as of yet. It may be a little mistier in the evenings, and I like, but this is a this is a quiet town. Well, as as long as you feel that way, I just I, being such a wonderfully godly man, and and you've really inspired me, you know, in the faith. And I would just hate to see that there'd be somebody in this town that might, you know, be causing problems that you wouldn't be be able to truly help the the souls of this of this fine little hamlet. Has he been causing problems for you? He seems to act a little weird around me, but it, it's not so much problems for me as much as it's talking to people about how he's cured this purple pox. There's definitely some weird stuff he seems to do with chanting and other things that, like when pe- sounds folks were telling me about it, I, I me being being from other areas and and knowing how the true faith goes, it it just seemed alarming. Hmm. And you've you don't know him. You've not met him before, have you? Uh, no, no, no. Of course not. I he just I don't know. There's just something about him that. That I I, I I just want you to be able to be successful in this town, sir, with mm. with with your parish, and and I would hate to be that you would come into an area where there might be somebody who has unholy ways. Hmm. How's this going to go, Steve, for Doc, our professor, our brother, <laughs> Gregor Foon? I'll say it goes positively. Okay, Fiona, you may have good instincts, but they might be clouded. I I think I'm. I think there's some there's a, a darkness on you. Don't tell me how I know this, but if you'd permit me, 
I may be able to clear it up. Uh, well, well certainly, Brother Foon. I mean, if if you think there is a darkness on me, I, I, I obviously would would want to support. Halfway you. through this, uh, he clamps an arm on your shoulder and pushes you to your knees and says, "I'm so sorry that this is going to hurt," and takes a silver dagger and carves a rune into your forehead. Oh my god! <laughs> she starts screaming, <laughs> <laughs> and he says. You're free. Immutely, and, and like wipes wipes it away and sort of steps back. Immediately, Fiona starts to feel the strength that she normally has, even though she had lost her. She she can't tune to her true form, but she'd always had this strength and some of the other things. And immediately, she feels that all draining away. What have you done? What have you done? And she immediately turns and runs out of the church. So when he wipes it, is it now gone? Like she no longer has the, or does she have a scar now on her it's forehead? It's like a faint scar, yeah. Faint scar on her forehead. Fiona runs out of the church and not knowing what else to do, decides that she's going to head back to town. Maybe she can confront the doctor and maybe she can, if she tells him what the, what the pre, that this is no longer, a, a, a this is not a simple priest. This is somebody who could change everything. Maybe he can restore her back. And maybe he'd be willing to restore her back if she brings back this information. So she heads back to the doctor. And when she gets to uh, she gets to the outskirts, she hears a rustling, and she hears her father's voice. Child, you smell different. Father, father, I didn't realize you were coming to follow me. Father, something horrible has happened. I had come here to to confront the person who calls himself Herr Doctor, who to, to see if I could get him to reverse the curse, but. But father, there's a there's a priest here, a, a brother Gregor Foon, and and he did something to me. I don't know. He 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 carved something in my forehead with a silver dagger, and and father, I think I think I'm full human. He like he comes up to you and sort of sniffs around you, and just rears back and howls in rage, <laughs> and runs off towards the town, like loping, sort of half half uh, crouching. And that's when Henrik Manover kind of steps around <laughs> on the side of the house. Is he gone? <laughs> oh, the, the giant evil railroad fellow. Well, not evil, but, you know, the, he's go- your dad's gone, huh? <laughs> you do not know what you have brought to this town. I did, what, did, what? Brother Gregor Foon is not an ordinary priest. He's not just some bumbling local. That. He <laughs> changed me. I am full human. What? He he grabbed me, shoved me to my knees, and carved a symbol in my forehead. I am full human now. Nine, this cannot possibly be true. It's true. Test me. Take me down to your laboratory. Test me. I, we, we, I bust you in. Surely, surely, you know, set you, bring you down into the, the basement. Shove aside the secret door. Didn't know this was here, did you, huh? Yeah? Anyway, in you go, in you go. <laughs> Not bad. You've gotten much better at hiding your lairs. Just, just sit, sit, and 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 you like. I start pulling out potions and or start mixing up something in a bit of a cauldron. Here, drink this. Why should I trust you? Oh hell, fine. I drink a little bit and hand it to you. I take a sip. I, <laughs> it's horrible, but I decide I'll go along with it and I drink the rest down. How's this gonna go? This is mine. What do you think? You decide. Uh, I'll say it's gonna go well. <laughs> we get. So what does that mean? Fiona starts to feel the strength come back. And not only does she feel her come back, she now feels like she can now regain her true form. Well, that's a bit unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> Herr Doctor, I didn't know that you would actually be willing to uh, Crap, do something. I think, oh, damn. That was Newt. Ah, oh, it shouldn't have been Newt. Shoot. I will. Well, now we must marshal the forces. This priest must go. I have to have your promise. We will we will back with you. We will join you. What is this V thing? I am the V in this conversation. You said marshal marshal your forces. Right, in the town. That are my f- friends and hench people in the town. Oh, so I take it you don't want me and my tribe. I don't think if I'm my father not, is no, nearby. I'm saying, no, your dad. Then, then the rest keep, of them are no, not that I, long, yeah, far behind. Yeah, yeah no, no, because your dad, he's, a, he's, he's going to bite me in half. And I'd rather him not do that. So you, you deal with your dad and you, 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 you behave yourself, young missy. You no no more betraying the peoples, and uh, we'll let this you know, we'll keep the newt between you and me, and uh, we'll just say I did it as a solid. 
It's a solid. <laughs> All right, Herr Doctor. We'll go along with it for now, but this isn't the end of our discussion. All right. So now it's your turn, Dr. Anna <laughs> So I just I I run to the, come on let's let's go we need to to town center. <laughs> run to the town center. There's a, of course a giant bell tower. Well not giant bell tower but a, a bell with the, in the middle of the town and I start ringing the bell and gathering the citizens of the the town to us. Good people of. Good people of Hammersgolf, I'm afraid. We have made a horrible mistake. The new priest that was sent to us is not one of our kind. In fact, it is, I have on good authority that he is trying to hunt us. Good people, we must band together and remove yet another priest. Are you with me? (laughs) Uh. (laughs) Are we going to make a habit of this? (laughs) This, I swear, the, the fifth time's a charm. The, well, I'd send the letters to the right churches, and, uh, you know, uh, anyway, yes. All right, we'll go along this time, sir. You, can you find or sense any of your people? Has anybody seen a giant strange man looking about the town? Fiona says, he's he's nearby. <laughs> Cause I, will, I will go gather him and the rest, the rest of my tribe. Because we should go do that and tell, make sure you tell him not to kill me. Because he was going to do that, and I'd rather he didn't. How, so how's this going to go? Is that my choice? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it goes negatively. <laughs> so the, the townspeople all start to gather together, and they all like, Gav your pitchforks and the lance and, and the torches. And we're going to sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> grab grab the pitchforks and the torches, and we're going to do this old school. We're going to go and get rid of us a priest. So, get it up and get get back in about five minutes, and uh, then we'll go. Uh, you know, deal with it. In the meantime, everybody in the town sort of scatters, and all of a sudden, your dad shows up, and of course, you've you you're still hanging about a little bit. But I probably wandered off to try and... Right. And before anything can happen, like before you have a chance to say anything, oh, good, it's your dad! <laughs> <laughs> the dad jumps me, sort of transforming in mid-leap, and grabs me by the throat and starts shaking me violently back and forth. I hear this run back. <laughs> father, father, do I get there in time? No, no, we we need him to stay alive just for a little longer. <laughs> At which point he kind of drops me, and I'm bleeding rather badly. <laughs> oh, this isn't good at all. I need I need a bandage. I need several bandages and some herbs. You you know where the secret is? <clears throat> Get the things. I'll give you a list. <laughs> And your list of stuff. Like, oh, hurry, please. <laughs> I run back to the basement. <laughs> and I pass out. <laughs> Gather the things and bring them back. And we patch you up. But you've lost a lot of blood. And you now <laughs> definitely have the werewolf curse on top of everything else. Which is going to make you a lot harder to boss us around. And being that you got bitten by my father <laughs> means that technically you're supposed to follow him from now on. Right? Does yeah. that work? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh-huh. In the church, I've I've reset my bowl. I put my things down, and I'm I'm adjusting some sprigs of flowers in the vase. And I'm wearing my vestments, and that's when the door bursts open, and the townspeople flood in. With, they've got you like over one shoulder with a bandage on. The like father the father has you. Uh, he's back to human, torn up clothes. Everyone's everyone's come in, and they're like Argh! very angry. And I and I t- take my uh, parchment out of my thing, and I start to. Oh, we have a full congregation today. <laughs> this is fantastic. That's the guy. Everyone, go get him. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and I start to read words that like slither off of your ears, and mm-hmm. you can't quite tell what they're saying. And all like all around the like place, rune the runes start to glow, 
and sort of silver light is pouring in over the bowl and that light's reflecting and like all the runes are out are glowing and people are kind of lost and stop. And I say, it's unfortunate that things always seem to go this way. Give me just one moment. And I start to undo my shirt and that's when we flash back again to that same like vaulted chamber in that room and a, like a, they finish with the silver hammer and a brother comes and wipes down my back, similar to the same movement I made for you. And there's a silvery shimmer and tattooed across my back is this ornate crucifix in like oh, scar. Man. And I turn around and it's also on my chest. And so then we kind of cut back and I was, I'm opening my shirt and revealing this. And I drop, drop those things and lift off the table two daggers and say, so it begins. <laughs> <laughs> and how's this going to go for uh, for the brother? This is a wild card. You guys can choose. I kind of want this to go well. Yes, please. Yes. Let's okay. have it go well. This um, goes well. So cut to outside the church <laughs> as he sort of is stepping around the dais, and then we cut to the outside, and there's just like the doors slam themselves shut, and you just see like sprays of blood <laughs> up along the windows. Um, like a, a crash just like a head flies through it and rolls down the way. Finally, like the, the doors are like shaking and rocking. You hear people screaming, Mein Gott, out! <laughs> and then it finally the doors sh- explode outward and shatter. And you two with the father, so uh, Dr. Heinrich Manover, Fiona, and Fiona's father all sort of spill out. And Fiona's father's all cut up. And he's kind of pushing you along and you are just kind of like shuffling your way <laughs> and and stepping out just like covered head to toe in blood, wearing tattered pants now, wielding two silver daggers, smiling and kind of like tripping a little bit <laughs> comes Brother Gregor Foon. I, I really just wish things hadn't gone this way this quickly. You all were so kind. But, you know, the Lord does work in rather violent ways. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I, and as I do, like, I kind of grab the father by the head and <laughs> slice his throat in front of you. And that's where I'll end my scene. Oh, <laughs> All right. So we'll roll for Aftermath. Yes. So everyone rolls their die. Yep. Mm-hmm. I got you. Mm-hmm. I've got a zero. Oh, no. Uh-oh. All right, zero. The worst thing in the universe. This probably doesn't include death, since death would be way better than whatever this is. Be creative and don't settle for the first worst thing that comes to mind. There's something darker, more awful, more wretched in there somewhere. So I got a a, a black seven, which is pathetic. You'll suffer. Oh, dear God, you will suffer. And everyone will know of your malfeasance, your stupidity, your lack of common sense and decency. You're probably going to be locked up, too. And so I rolled a white one. (laughs) So I've got uh, Dreadful. You are certainly dead, probably from self-inflicted wound. People you care about are also probably dead, maybe through your own stupid, ugly failure. To say that you fucked up is an insult to fucked up upness. You have (laughs) redefined the term. (laughs) Uh, So we'll play out our montages and go from there. So Stacy, go for it. Flashback to Fiona and her father when she's little. Um, she's just a pup. Just a pup. <laughs> just a wee pup. And they've gone out on their, her first successful hunt. <laughs> and her father tells her, remember, when I go, you will be in charge of the tribe. And no matter what happens, no matter what you have to sacrifice, you have to protect them. Several days later, and uh, you see a very disheveled, but still alive, Dr. Manover. And he's conjuring up, you know, trying to mix herbs, and he's over a fire, and he's just trying desperately, and potion after potion, just drinking them, and just throwing bowl after bowl aside, and you see, like, a giant pile. He's been doing this for a while, and he's like, nothing is working. The curse prema- remains. I've, uh, I've lost it. The brother, Brother Gregor, uh, watches you two run into the tavern, like you're kind of running down the way and running into the tavern to hide. It's one of the nearest buildings and probably one of the bigger, more easily fortified. And he's like, I see you. Oh, I got to get to you later. 
still some work to do back there. And he, he steps back into the room where you hear like some moans and occasional screams and they're silenced one by one. Fiona makes it to the tavern. As she gets closer to the tavern, she suddenly sniffs out more of, of her tribe. They have finally arrived. And she realizes that she can't take him up against this because even though they would outnumber him and they're definitely stronger than the townspeople that went against him, he has magic far, he has like holy rituals far more deadly than she's ever known. So she has to figure out a way to turn them away without and 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 keep keep him from finding out that they're there. You know, a, a moon full night, uh, a field covered littered with sheep, and all of a sudden you see a a strange a, a slightly familiar form of of a very furry man over leaping upon a sheep and dragging it into the bushes and thinking maybe I could get used to this. Brother Gregor, the the scars aren't burning on him right now, and he feels a calm as he looks over the, like, varied limbs <laughs> that scatter <laughs> about the church, and he steps gingerly through and steps carefully towards the tavern, and as he gets closer, it the, the scars start to burn again, and he smiles and says, There's work yet to do, my lord. Fiona sees her mother step out of the shadows. He's gone, isn't he? She, he's, he's been taken from us, says her mother. He has mother, but we cannot... We cannot go after this one. He has more power than we've ever gone up against. Her mother tries to argue with her, but Fiona says, no, you know that I'm leader now. I refuse for us to put ourselves in this situation. We have to flee. So you, uh, there you see a, a ring of werewolfed people and in, around a fire, and into this steps the doctor. It's like, now the time has come where you, you, you will, will learn the proper way of doing things. You have a new leader now. At which point, the alpha of this particular werewolf pack steps up to him and just, like, backhands him <laughs> into, like, the crowd. And everybody kind of, like, grabs him and props him up. He's like, okay, or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Gregor, he, he can feel that there are wolves out and about. And he's like, mm, I'll get to you soon enough. But the, uh, the good doctor requires my attention. And he, he opens the door of the tavern, and it's dark. You've, you've hooded the lanterns. Doctor, doctor, I've got your medicine. <laughs> That's a good one. And he trips on the threshold. Oh, bugger. And stabs himself right in the throat. <laughs> and as he gets up, he's like, oh. <laughs> and bleeds out on the floor. <laughs> Fiona and her mother, hearing this gurgling, had, had tracked the brother going into the tavern. And we're about to, they 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 hesitate because they want to see where he's going to go. And they hear this gurgling noise. And they, Fiona d- screws up her courage and looks in on the tavern and says, My God, the only thing that could have defeated him was himself. So I guess we go, we again back to that same werewolf tribe. And you sort of see... While the doctor has been accepted into this group, he is by far the lowest member on this particular totem pole, and even the uh, little children, little little pups, do nothing but mock him with the calls of, you know, witch doctor, and where's your magic now, buddy? And occasionally you, you see the, the, like, humbly sort of crouched in a corner, flinching whenever any of the other werewolves go by as he tries once again to desperately create some sort of potion that will enable him to regain his powers. Fiona and her tribe are traveling traveling to a new area and they come across another pack who they have friendly relations with and they go to do a formal meeting with them just to let them know they're traveling through the area not settling there that they're going on to a new space and during the greetings with the Alpha she glances to the side and notices Herr Doctor in the corner and smiles and says to the Alpha, you know, we might be able to use another member in our tribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nein. <laughs> <laughs> with that, our story ends. We will return again with a new tale to spin to dare to entertain. <laughs> 
I was one of your players, John Holt. You can find me on Twitter at Lord Joho. You can find me on Instagram at Board Ghost. Stacy, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me at Instagram on st- at Stadomo, S T A D O M O. And Steve. Uh, you can find me on Instagram now I, at Steve Moves. Nice. All right. To learn more about the players and the engine in our story, visit BoardGhost.com. You can attempt to pierce the veil and contact us at BoardGhostWorld on Twitter. Shout out to the Ether if you have desires we can fulfill. Please leave reviews and comments on iTunes, your preferred listening portal. And please take a moment to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest episodes. We'd like to thank Pat Couple for our theme song and interlude music. You can find more about Pat at patcouples.tumblr.com or on his band's page, hotelsandhighways.com. If you're not alone in the void, share our stories. The more they are consumed, the truer they become. Living is a highway, then heaven is a bus stop. Been waiting for a minute there, but has it been forever? Cause dying don't agree.